<laughs> hey there, I'm Tiffany Youngren, owner of OMH Agency and founder of the podcast Ignition System. Welcome to Next Step Nation, a weekly show that features industry influencers who share their successes and challenges to inspire, inform, and entertain serious podcasters. Thank you so much for listening. Today, I'm so excited to welcome Leanne Scott. She's digitaliz digitalization strategist for Fresh Cut Digital and host of the up and coming Helping Accountants Grow podcast. She loves to take traditional business models and reimagine how they could work better. How can they enable a business to help more people? She's originally from South Africa and she's lived in the UK and the US, but finally settled in the beautiful Lake District in the UK. Leanne, welcome. Hi, Tiffany. It's wonderful to be here today. I am so glad to have you. Now, I'm just going to tell everybody, I'm Leanne is currently working her tail off um, with getting this amazing new podcast ready to launch called Helping Accountants Grow. So I've had the privilege of getting to see behind the scenes of it. So I'm really looking forward to this time uh, for what I call, you know, real podcasters, you know, real life podcasters and real stories from real podcasters. So I appreciate you coming and sharing your experiences and what you're, what you're going through and what you envision. It's wonderful to be here. Um, yeah, we've had quite a, a busy couple of weeks, a couple of months actually, I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing now, before we get into all that, I know beforehand, something that uh, a lot of people don't know about you is that you love public speaking and that you were the keynote speaker at the World Youth, Cong uh, World Youth Congress in Casablanca, Morocco many years ago. Tell me about that. Yes, I was. So I was, um, it was the World Youth Congress and um, I did a full presentation um, to I think it was about a thousand young people across the world who are wanting to change the world. Um, it was quite an experience, um, just from a from a speaker point of view. To so looking at um, presentation skills and how they can present themselves and present their ideas, um, but also from a personal point of view, it was probably one of the first trips I took on my own um, as an adult, and um, the. The name of the conference was the World Youth Congress of Casablanca. So I assumed it was going to be in Casablanca. <laughs> so I got picked up from the airport uh, by a cab driver or, who'd been arranged and um, he didn't speak any English. And they put me in the car and I was all happy and I saw all the signs for Casablanca passing eventually. There were no more signs for Casablanca. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so scared. Um, and obviously, we didn't have mobiles quite like we have now. And I was phoning my husband, um, saying, I don't know where I am. <laughs> I don't know where they're taking me. He doesn't speak English. He's just driving. There's no more signs. For oh my gosh. <laughs> Eventually, I landed up in Rabat. And I'm like, I, <laughs> I think my adrenaline was pumping. Um, it turns out that they had, although they said Casablanca, the actual event was in Rabat, which is about an hour outside of Casablanca. Oh my um, goodness. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it okay, because I would also be terrified. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my goodness. That, um, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. So, well, awesome. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about your business, yourself, what you have going on, and how uh, podcasting has kind of branched out of what you're doing oh absolutely so um I, my title is a bit of a mouthful <laughs> as we saw in the beginning um and I it's difficult to kind of encompass what to call me but I think digitalization strategist just really encapsulates what I do it, because I we can build websites we can build apps we can build um case management systems but it's really about looking at traditional business models and seeing how do we improve on that? How can we create a, um, a online system that makes it easier, not just for the customer, but easier for the team and the business owners who are actually trying to deliver a product or service. Mm -hmm. um, so we've taken some interesting models um, 
a traditional debt collection style business and we've reimagined that and we've take, completely changed it so that it is purely online um, and it's, it's helping people at the start of their journey as opposed to waiting until they're in crisis, which is what traditional debt collection companies do. We've also, um, one of my most exciting projects, which actually goes live next week, um, is a company, it is a charity, charity organization called Carers Connect. Um, and what we did is with all the lockdown um, and people being so isolated, so in-home carers or unpaid carers are feeling very isolated, even more so than maybe the rest of us. And so we built this platform, this community where they can log in and access information, but where they can also um, meet other people who are in the same situation. So instead of leaving them in the big bad, bad world of Facebook, where they just, you know, they, they lack if they find their information thereafter, we've actually put them in their own community so they feel safe. Um, and they have access and signpostings to the right information. So that's just two exciting projects that we're working on at the moment. Um, awesome. Yeah, so I, I, oh, you also asked um, how it led to the podcasting. Yeah. Um, so I've just got so many ideas and so many thoughts. <laughs> and it's a case of um, how do we put it out into the world? You know, content marketing is such a big buzzword at the moment, and it's so essential to any business. But when it actually comes down to how do you distribute ongoing content every week um, in a way that doesn't require you to sit down and write a 2,000 word blog post, which is gonna take you half a week. Um, and then still come up with individual um, social media graphics. Um, you still wanna connect on LinkedIn with potential clients. Um, and podcasting for me was a way for us to really share some of our knowledge, some of our tips, um, ways for people to reimagine their own businesses and put a full-scale content management um, process in place that gets our word out wherever, uh, as, as far as we can really. Nice, nice. That's awesome. So what kind of guests are you going to have on? What, who, who have you interviewed and like what is the content structure strategy that you are implementing? So um, for helping accountants grow, it's, it's looking at how we bring, bring this debt collection product to life. Um, and accountants have a really um, tough challenge in that they, they are there to do a particular function, which is um, prepare you for tax season, submit your uh, company taxes and keep you compliant. But beyond that, there's so much more that they could be doing. So when we look at the content that we want to deliver is how do we help accountants um, or empower them to provide more value, to support their business customers more, um, and, and also show their customers that their accountant is um, really a trusted advisor and someone they can turn to. So we, we've looked at kind of from both sides. In terms of guests that we're working or that we would like to interview, we've had um, some uh, technical experts, so on the digitalization side, so how you can, how accountants and businesses can automate um, and build uh, new systems to make life easier. Um, but then also we've got marketing strategists, uh, marketing experts to give you know, top tips on how to really use email to connect with your customers. Um, we can, uh, who else have we got? We've got uh, actual accountants that are really good at what they do and um, that have had successes um, and coming on and sharing those top tips with other accountants um, that will hopefully help them to improve their businesses. I love it. I love it. One thing I like about what you're doing too, is it, when you're, as we've discussed your content, it sounds like you're doing kind of, uh, you're wanting to make sure you hit four different areas. And so getting 
the topics to kind of rotate through those different areas that you really want to make sure to provide rounded, well-rounded um, information for your audience. I think that that's really smart. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and too, like we talked about just right before we got on, we're transitioning here on Next Step Nation going from you know, people who have already set the path and now really getting a lot more vulnerable because just like with where you're at, you're starting a podcast. Uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. I don't know about you, but I'm on a lot of podcast group, you know, a lot of group in a lot of podcast groups. And you know, there's just a lot that goes into, goes into the podcast. So it's true. You can just turn on your phone and start talking and then boom, you've got a podcast, but you're doing a lot more thoughtfully. And so in that case, there's all these other things that come into play from what equipment do I get? And, you know, what, what assets do I really need? And, and, you know, how can we get going in the lightest manner, but yet get the most out of it? Because when we're putting all this effort into it, we don't want it to go to waste. So with that, what have you found to be, as you walked into it, what do you think were like two or three of the most important things when you were walking into this whole starting a podcast idea? What are two or three things that you felt like were really important you wanted to make sure you got put together before you get rolling? So it was interesting. Um, I think that being a complete newbie to podcasting, um, it, it, it overwhelmed me a little bit to start with in terms of there, there's a lot of setup. Um, and I think that that was really our draw part to working with you um, was that the setup is it's so laid out. So for me, putting those foundations in place, there's lots of things, uh, little things like getting all those that artwork done, the voiceovers, um, all your links on the big list. Um, I would never have thought of putting all those things um, in one place. And that's been magic in terms of um, James, who is uh, my business partner, my husband, and now I'm a production assistant. Um, he keeps going, where's this? Go look on the big list. <laughs> I don't have a lot into this. Go look on the big list. <laughs> so I think probably the big list is my is our biggest takeaway and with every cent we've spent. Hmm. Um, nothing else. Um, and then may, I, I suppose the, the guidance of knowing what to say um, I was surprised at having having been a public speaker, having just spoken about that, having been a public speaker and, and stood up in front of audiences of a thousand people and had no qualms about talking for an hour to getting onto my first few podcast interviews and being so nervous <laughs> about doing the interview. But I think and, you know, just taking those deep breaths and say, and, and really just going through the checklists and following the script. Um, I think, you know, that the, the big list for the setup and then the scripts and checklists for the actual day of the interview are definitely my two big wins. Oh, good, good. So, so with that in mind, like what, um, you know, I'm trying to imagine like when you were going, I want to do a podcast. So I want to get all this content. It's a great way to make sure that we can have content that's going out that addresses exactly what our, our audience needs to hear the people we're helping. I want, we want to be able to answer their questions. So, I mean, it sounds like a couple of the things that you knew you wanted to have to, because I mean, podcasting, you can get as deep or as shallow into it as, as you want, but you, no matter what you have to select what your priorities are when you're entering into it. For example, you and I both, it's like intros, outros, we'll worry about that later, right? When it comes to video, because you have to make those choices. There is no way you can start a podcast unless you have a multi-million dollar studio <laughs> without, you know, you have to make choices and you have to prioritize. And it seems like, like you're not, like number one was content. You know, you wanted to have a balance of content. I feel like that's something I saw you come into it with and you continue like that continues to be in the forefront. Was there anything else that you kind of came into it and you went, this is super important to me. It sounds maybe like the relationships with the guests, because if you're concerned about 
what to talk about. It's beyond just what the audience is hearing, but it's also like that conversation with people. Um, would you say that that maybe was another thing that you walked into it going, this is really important to me, or is there anything else maybe that, that you just, from the beginning were like, I want to make sure I nailed this. Otherwise you wouldn't have invested in making sure it was set up correctly. So what were a couple of the priorities to you entering yeah. into it? So absolutely. So like I say, content has definitely been my leading reason for doing it. Um, and then getting, having a reason to talk to guests, I, you know, by reaching out that outreach um, and working with Tom Ford. Obviously we launched this new um, product, which is, is new and it's innovative in the world. Um, but picking up the phone and just doing those sales calls, like, you want it, you want it, come buy my stuff. Um, I wanted a different way of doing that. And, mm -hmm. and I thought with the podcast, inviting people on, on to, as guests, putting the content out there gives us that edge, gives us a reason for people to talk to us. Um, the other side is something that one of um, my mentors has said to me over and over again, is that you have to get visible. And if, um, if nobody knows who you are, nobody knows where to send you some money um, <laughs> and hire you for your services. Yeah. Um, and that's, and you know, when I think about that, it's been on my, my to-do list for probably three, four years is to get more visible, get on video. Um, and it's, yes, you can just use your phone, but that just never felt slick enough for me. Maybe it's the perfectionist in me. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and I put the, that video, take the phone and I'm like, right, um, hair's done, makeup's done, put the video on, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm um, with you. Yeah, and I think, so for me, my priority is to get the content out, meet, meet interesting people who, and have those conversations, have a reason to talk to people, to outreach to people, but also to get visible. And I think this podcasting gives me that framework that I feel comfortable working within. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think that, that, that that's my real reason for starting the podcast. So in this process, what has been easier than you thought it would be? Oh, um, <laughs> that's <laughs> is, <a question>. yeah. <laughs> uh, what was easier than I thought it would be? Um, maybe coming up with the content. Um, I think once th that, that always felt like quite a block, but once, um, you know, I really started digging deep and researching the audience and researching what else is available and seeing what questions um, my target audience are asking, I think coming up with the topics has been easier than I expected because it, it felt quite difficult for a little while. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that's great. And so what's been harder, just to be fair, what's been harder than you thought it would be or more of a challenge? Um, I think maybe the time it's taken to get the setup right. Um, 100% I am happy that it needs to be done and that it needs to be done correctly and that there's there's lots of like elements. Um, but it's been, it, it surprised me how much time has it's needed from me while still doing all the other work. But in saying that, your checklists where I can tick off and, you know, when I get pulled away, it's so easy to come back to and see exactly what I haven't done yet. Um, I think if it wasn't for that, I probably would have said it's not for you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And you know, one thing we've talked about too beforehand is just life. Like, you know, if we were able just to sit down, have undivided, like, and I know you've had a few times like that where you've been able just to sit down and knock some stuff out, but just, I don't know, but I feel like we both are kindred spirits right now because we both are like, you know, we've got other things going on besides what we normally have going on and just pushing through and um, being able to stay on track. So I think you've done such a good job of just like powering through and getting to that next check checklist and doing it. So, um, so kudos to you for sure. <laughs> so, 
So what do you, um, like, I, I always, it's always fascinating to me when, cause you have multiple projects going too. So you have this and then you have a nonprofit, which I don't know, did I know about that? But I knew that you also have been like, you spent a lot, you put so much time and effort into your project, helping accountants grow, like the actual service that you're providing behind that as well. So um, what are like, do you have a couple tips for people who are, cause we all have the same thing. We have life and you know, hello, we're in this crazy world right now. So it's more distracting than ever. And then two business, because, you know, be, between pivoting and then other people pivoting and in marketing, you're helping other people pivot as well as yourself. And then now you're starting a podcast also, do you have like two or three tips for people that has really helped push you through being able to not just take those on, but really excel at those, even though probably you're going, what, <laughs> you know, but if you're like me, I'm like, what, but you really are, you really are excelling at it. So what are a couple of things that have really gotten you through? So you're able to accomplish it, not just plan it, but actually see it happen. So, yeah. Um, some days I think if I, I've got too much going on, but, but for me, the big thing is they've got a link. There's got to be a, a, a big picture to why I'm taking, doing certain things. Um, so we are a marketing agency, but what we do is we never take on more than um, three or four projects at a time. Um, and then it's having the teams, that, you know, whether it's virtual teams, um, remote teams working on the different projects. Um, Skype for me is my must have tool. I know lots of people like Slack and that, but for me, Skype keeps, I can, I can, the people I'm working with all tend to use Skype. Um, and being organized and, and, and that project manager, uh, as opposed to doing all the work. I think that was when you're trying to do all the actual work, the nitty gritty of it yourself, um, that's when the wheels start coming off. Um, but actually keeping yourself as a project manager um, on most of them works. And surprisingly, it's going to seem like a really analog tip, but I have a, as much as you can have all the tools in the world, the Monday boards and <laughs> Slack and all of that, I find, because I'm a peripheral writer, a prolific writer, and so I have one of those notebooks with the different um, divider sections. And so each project has their own section, but in the same notebook. Mm -hmm. So that all the notes from phone calls and questions all go into that project section. So that when, which will inevitably happen, I'll be working on the podcast or I'm working on the debt um, project and the other project phones in and asks for something. <laughs> then you need to be able to flip between them quite quickly. Um, and so for me, having this notebook with the different um, sections for each project helps me to flick the switch in my mind very quickly. Um, so I don't know whether everybody will agree, but for me, that has been a lifesaver. You know, that I, I, as you're talking, I'm just like, man, that's what I'm missing in my life. I used to always do that. I, exactly what you're talking about, I used to do. And as you were talking through it, I'm thinking, you know, I think I'm bringing that back into my life. I mean, I'm kind of a Trello board user, so I've got different lists and things on that, but there's just something about writing it down. Um, it, it, and psychologically, there's a lot of reasons why that works as well, but just for the fact of knowing it's just right there and you can just jot it down wherever you are. I think that that's, I think it's really a practical tip too. So, um, okay. So let's, let's talk tools just real quick. I speaking of, um, let's geek out for a minute on like what your favorite tools are for podcasting and how, uh, like what kind of equipment you're using and things like that. And I'm, I'm a total, I totally think people should not put a ton of money in, into their beginning equipment because it, you're really testing. You're still in the moment of like, proof of concept, you know, where are we going to go from here? Who's our audience? And then like upgrade, you know, because it's like, okay, I got it. I know where I'm going to podcast from. I know how I'm going to do this. But also I know everybody asks, they're always like, what microphone do you use? What headphones do you use? Like what? So, so share with us, what microphone do you use, Leanne? Um, so 
I am not so geeky about the microphones because I don't know what it's called. That is this one. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Good. It, it, it's a toner, actually. There we go. Okay. Toner. There we go. Um, and and yes, exactly. I mean, everybody was like, "Oh, it took me the took me mic," and um, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no wait. Okay, so the listeners don't know our joke, but um, yeah. So the microphone that I got, you know, we jokingly in our own group call it the Tiffany mic, but um, it used to be called the Joe Rogan mic. <laughs> but, thank you, Leanne, though. I love it. I love it that you call it that, <laughs> but no, don't get one yet. Like I had a Yeti forever. And in fact, I kept it, but it broke and I used it broken for like eight episodes. So, um, you know, you, I, I think you're doing it great. I think you're doing it just right. You're starting with, you have to use an, a different mic than your built-in computer mic. So that's good. Uh, you have a pop filter, which is awesome. So good job, but no, don't jump up yet. <laughs> it's not, yeah. you'll so get it was, the <laughs> It was interesting. Um, so my first interview, cause you had said, don't use the computer, um, uh, mic, the built-in mic. And I, no, we've got one. And I said to my, I said to James, um, I need a Tiffany mic. Said, you don't need a Tiffany <laughs> mic. <laughs> Someone's got one. <laughs> says, oh my gosh. <laughs> we've got one um oh i don't have it yet um it's one of those with the fluffy thing on the top oh he said, yeah he says this one will be fun so, all right <laughs> I won't be my. anyway oh, my I, first I love you guys thank you <laughs> <laughs> my first interview arrives and he's like here's the mic plug it in it was at that point that i realized that because my i'd upgraded my laptop it doesn't have a mic jack anymore Mm. Um, it only has USB connections. Oh. Anyway, so I, was, I was allowed to order a new mic, except okay. I was allowed to choose a key closer <laughs> so that I didn't <laughs> spend too much. <laughs> so is it, does it have a USB connector then? USB okay. connector. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. So do you use any earbuds or headphones or anything yet? No, I don't actually. Um, I did read on your checklist that I should do, uh, but I find I don't like the sound, it kind of echoes in my head and I find that quite distracting. So I prefer not to use that, okay. but I will give it a try as well. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. And honestly, the, the reason you want to use earbuds and I don't hear it now, like, I think you sound great, but, um, you know, when your speaker sends out the sound, it goes into the microphone. And so it doesn't, it's not a clean sound. So that's why it's, it's really good, but yeah, I have to get, I like, I use um, I know podcasters who are listening, who are real, there's a lot of audio geeks out there that I respect. However, um, I'm not going to wear headphones <laughs> yet. Um, and so I, I do have like in-ear monitors is what I use, but, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, if in the beginning, just, you know, like I, like I always say, it's like, don't put a bunch of money into it and then, then you'll get used to them and then you can go from there and see what you like. So, so, and then you use Zoom for your interviews, is that correct? For your remote interviews? I do, yes. But a little birdie told me that, uh, is it Screencast? Squadcast. Squad <laughs> yeah. Uh, they come out with some funky stuff in uh, November, I think. Um, yeah. So we'll see if that happens. Um, but for the moment, Zoom works really well. It connects um, where it's supposed to drop, you know, drop the recording straight in my Dropbox where I need it so that it can um, pick up all the automations. Excellent. Excellent. So, if, so looking at your podcast end to end, what is your favorite tool that you use? Um, podcast ignition system. Oh, that's so <laughs> awesome. That just makes me so happy. Now, as soon as we get off this call, we're going to, I'm you know, I, I told you like, we're going to have our, our, my, what I call my selfish questions is, which is what we do right after our interview, but we will also be talking about how to make this setup easier so we can streamline the rest of it. <laughs> so my brain is already working. I'm like, I gotta, you know, we'll, we'll stick with this, but that's awesome. Thank you for saying podcast ignition system. So what else, what is another tool that you're just, that you really like that has been really helpful? Um, <clears throat> For podcasting specifically. Uh, or just a tool that's made podcasting more simple for you. Just, you can use uh, it in any capacity. It doesn't have to be for the interview, but just in some 
mm-hmm. framework uh, of podcasting? I, I think I think uh, probably Proceed Street actually, um, because I've never used. Uh, funnily enough, I must have looked at it at some point in the last few years because I had an account set up, um, but obviously didn't really go into it. But it is actually an amazing um, program in terms of keeping what you can put in there, the amount of detail, the checklist, how you can add your conditioning. Um, and I know you and I are both um, system geeks. We love, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a high level as well. And um, But I think out of all the things that ties it together, Process Street has been brilliant. Um, and then I don't know whether we can call them a tool. Um, <laughs> In, in the UK, that could be an insult, but it's really not meant that way, um, is the level nine um, VAs. So they the team, are, the team part of the team aspect, um, yeah. level nine, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah, in the US, that would be an insult also, but I know that's oh. not how you mean it. <laughs> but as far as, but I see what you mean, like the team is a huge part of it. So do you want to share a little bit about how you have put your team together to help you with your podcast? Because the whole idea as a podcaster is to not have like, you you should just do your interview and leave. Like that's the whole point of the setup being more complex, but the team is such a huge part of it afterwards how have you, or how, how is your team right now? And then how do you envision it to be, to really help make that happen for you? So all you have to do is really show up to the interview. I think they've been great. Um, I, I think the, the, the first month, we just completed our first month um, with the team. And it's, it's a bit of a learning process in terms of giving the instruction, um, understanding their capabilities and their limitations. Um, you know, it's one thing saying, yes, we can do graphic design, but it's a completely different um, thing for them to interpret what I mm-hmm. need. Um, so so that's that's just a learning curve thing. Um, but in terms of being able to, what once a lot of the, the interview is done, um, pushing, pushing the um, transcriptions, pushing the graphics, um, and then having that distribution. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, creating content is one thing. Um, and I can do that in the evenings, no problem. But, or, you know, on weekends if you really want to. But in terms of being able to actually distribute it and consistently, I think that's where the team's uh, power really comes in. Um, because, you know, clients need their attention. So we do, and that's what we've done for the last two, three, four years is we're so busy creating content and building things for our clients and doing their websites and um, their email campaigns that, you know, cobbler has no shoes. Um, we never have time to do our own. Mm-hmm. And this, this ensures that we have a consistent um, program of content going out. So I think that's where the team's uh, power really comes in. I love it. I love it. Well, awesome. Well, I could literally talk to you about this all day. I just, um, I, I feel like we both have the same feeling about technology and processes. So, um, it's just been delightful to talk to you. I really like to, uh, what you had to share about how to push through and get, get your podcast going in a way that will, you'll get the most out of it. You had some really great tools to share and ways that you're able to push through all the rest of the things that are going on from work to family, but also having pro- a project like a new podcast to begin and really get off the ground in an amazing way. Um, is there anything that I didn't ask that maybe I should have, but uh, that you'd like to share with everyone? No, I think we've covered everything. Um... I just want to say that no, if you didn't pay me to say podcast ignition, <laughs> um, I think you know what there, there's there's so many there's so many marketing tools out there, and and there's so many you should have a YouTube channel, you should have a Facebook, you should have a podcast, you should have this 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 and this. Um, but actually, you know, having working with you has really enabled me to have a podcast um, in a meaningful way not just another place to half-heartedly do something. Mm. So, you know, it, it really, I think if it wasn't for the podcast admission system, we probably wouldn't have pursued it because there is just, we just don't know enough. 
um, and, we, and it's changing all the time. So at least we have someone to hold our hands. Oh, well, it's just been a pleasure. And thank you so much for all that. I just, I'm humbled and um, just grateful. So I, I don't even know how to talk anymore. Cause I'm like, wait, we usually <laughs> just talk about like your stuff. So, so I do appreciate it. That's it, it's just so much fun. And it's really my favorite thing. I can't believe that for a living, I get to help people podcast and do interviews and get their content out and I just get to geek out about processes and automation in the background and hand it over. So, um, so thank you. It's just been so much fun. Um, okay. I have one more question. It's super important. My totally favorite question. And I know you love to cook, you love food. So I'm excited to ask you, where is your favorite restaurant that you like to go to? And what do you order when you go there? Well, had you asked me, about a month ago, I probably would have had 10 different options. But we went up to Loch Fine in Scotland um, not so long ago. And a friend of mine said, you have to go to the Starfish restaurant in Tarbet. And we're like, okay, when we arrived, it's this very, very quaint little village with nothing but two restaurants. <laughs> um, and we ordered the prawns, the grilled prawns with lemon butter and garlic. Ooh, yum. But they, you could taste the freshness. The, uh. They were straight from the sea. Um, and it was just, I would I would have gone back the next night if they were open. <laughs> they were closed the next night. And when we'd finished eating our meal, the table next to us um, was two gentlemen who had ordered hot love want that for dessert oh. <laughs> it was just the I would go back do the five hour drive just for that. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome well Leanne so before we go can you just let everybody know where they can find you and who do you help exactly so you can find us at helpingaccountantsgrow.com or collectyourdebt.com um, those are our two interesting projects to share at the moment. Um, who do we help specifically is we help accountants who want to grow their practices and who want to support their business clients to get paid. Mm, love it. Love it. Well, awesome. Well, thank you, Leanne, so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great fun. Yes, yes. And thanks so much to everyone for listening. Thank you to our outstanding team. And remember, the best really is yet to come. Happy podcasting. <laughs>